road, more traffic. It is the 28th, and the days are starting to warm up, but of course there have been massive uh, solar flares in the sun, the coronal mass, coronal mass ejections, or CMEs. Unbelievable, the largest one I've ever seen so far. This is, our, this is in a couple of years, the largest uh, solar flare. So it should warm up for the next couple of days. Usually the heat lingers from a solar flare for about four to five days, five days out maximum. So we just went through a period of solar activity. Uh, it seems to have calmed down now more, the, the solar activity. And so we should be seeing the effect last for the next five days. And then it will uh, start to retreat again. Now the other effect is coming in as well. We've got a longer period of sunshine. Uh, so we have a longer thermal input for, north, for, for, for the northern sphere. And so that means uh, a longer thermal, oh, oh more, uh, a higher thermal temperature. Temperature is the, the sort of measure of the volume of, of, of the thermal mass. Because it is actually a mass, it's not simply there on its own. There's a mass of thermal energy. So the larger the mass is, the the thermal mass the warmer it's going to be of course you know as the thermal mass shrinks as you have in fall it starts to get colder and of course the thermal max doesn't need to reach a minimum until basically there's almost no thermal input and that would typically be around uh, March or April your thermal mass is at an actual, we'll call it an absolute minimum. Or at your at, 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 the, at the minimum. So this is right. But it, 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 there still is the mundane.
the mundane is sitting going through all the data waiting for the data to come in because it takes you to understand one solar cycle in terms of your thermal input and output because there is thermal output as well from the anything any mass that absorbs uh, thermal energy will then emit it uh, this is the case in terms of the uh, Planck black, black body uh, uh, understanding is take a pool of water when is it uh, warmer to swim in the morning or in the afternoon or let's say even late at night around midnight well, late at night at midnight is still pretty warm because you have the thermal input Uh, that went in during the day, and at night the thermal mass is still there and being emitted. It doesn't stop the emission uh, until about uh, about uh, five o'clock in the morning, five six o'clock in the morning, just before sunrise. That's when you are at the lowest of uh, 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 thermal mass. And, and at that point, at that point, that's when uh, it starts getting you start feeling to be colder and. Uh, it, it will then, during the day, as the sun rises, uh, absorb more thermal energy. But to sit and watch this uh, 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 on a uh, seasonal basis, in tracking it with the uh, Earth's orbit, takes an entire year. So, there's a year's worth of observation at the research desk uh, that has to be done in order to sort of uh, gain this understanding. And of course there are other observational uh, requirements as well that put you outside at midnight and other, other hours of the day. This observing uh, the thermal dynamics that go on around your own neighborhood to see how things play out. You should be able to see whatever you see on the satellite, you should be able to see locally in part uh, and understand how your local position, according to GPS, uh, matches up with what you see on the saddle. And that took me close to seven years to do. It wasn't uh, uh, necessarily a really short thing, but what you learn from it, from it is amazing. And this is this is this is the nature this is the nature of research. And the nature of research, uh, assuming you're not just simply uh, doing uh, the, the Da Vinci experiment and just using all data and not understanding where your data comes from, which a lot of what's happening. Most modern scientists today simply work on a theoretical model. They don't necessarily care how it matches up with reality. It's all about data, and they're often extremely wrong. Good. That's alright. It's <laughs> okay. Thank you. This I, um, uh, typically, at least a day, if not longer. about the research is it does take a long time, it's not something that's done uh, overnight, and the projects can take years. So you develop a sort of a uh, comfortable environment to work in, uh, make sure your food is there, you need a place to sleep because you do 
do need to sleep and uh matter of time. You do your work over time and understand that it's going to take a bit of time to get everything done and yeah, you're there. <laughs> and that's why you also have other projects you do. You don't just do the single project, you do multiple projects. And so, uh, there's always something to work on, there's always bits and pieces that need, need to be done. Uh, this, in, this, in many cases, forms the mundane. And because you have bits and pieces that need to be done, uh, so, so sort of maybe things like you have to upgrade your computers, you have to make sure everything is working right now. There are electrical issues, there are plumbing issues, there are uh, home maintenance, if you will. Is about uh, oh quarter past nine nine thirty it's about uh, 21 hours and 38 minutes in, and 30 minutes into the day of April 28th and the reason why we're giving our time and date stamp in here because well as they always time and date stamp don't uh, always show up as you transfer files back and forth and so uh, the time and date stamp lets me know where this log uh, belongs. So, adding that in, so we are on the ride back. Uh, so the church lockdown, we're, doing that. we're doing services at my parents' house. Uh, so I was there, we had a dinner, we had a meal. The meals are appropriate with these services. And all the services with the East and Christianity is a family celebration. And so you have a meal with them. This is typical. And so we're continuing on, even though there's a lockdown in progress. Robbery, theft, murder. And why? Because they try to convince you that it's not. We have a bit of waiting to do. I 
think we got we're almost clear on the left side. It's uh, coming southbound. And that's. Oh, I think so. I can make it. There we go. We have a bus behind us. That's okay. We can make these lights and give us a distance uh, between myself and the bus. But they've passed before and the it's been okay. It hasn't really been an issue. Is that the thing is, as you get you, as you start to do these things, there is an issue of getting more and more used to it. But there's always, you know, concerns. You always have to have, in terms of your mind and sense, you always have to have a sense of safety. And I think these are going to, this is, this is going to be paramount for a long time within the ride blog. That, in terms of our discussion, that, that this is what's going to happen. But the thing is, the government takes the position that it has to stand in authority overall. And this is the nature of authority, and the nature of authority is uh, basically the psychology of people who need to control every aspect of their life, or at least have the feel that they are in control. There's a, psycho there's a psychological factor there within control that makes a person so the so-called government type. I can't find my Kleenex, so <laughs> uh, the way to get my place, get to my place for the Kleenex. Uh, they don't, oh, they, I don't think they know the vlog cameras here, so they're wondering who I'm talking to. But anyways, I could have Bluetooth on, but <laughs> that's not necessarily what they uh, seem to be aware of. Bus behind us a little bit, a little bit in here. So here we go. Good speed on the down. As I stated uh, before, uh, the, those who are in the need to control that, these are the authoritarian, authoritarian type of people. They love a uniform, they love order, they love structure. We'll take the assumption that nobody else knows how to do it. They need to instruct everybody how to do things in their own, in their sense of the world of how to do things right. They take the assumption that their views are the only views, and they all, their views are the only correct views. So therefore, they need to instruct others on how to behave properly, how to do things properly. This is the driver's license, this is driving, these are your driver's right, this is your health, instruct, uh, health inspectors, the construction inspectors, and, you know, the another, number of different so-called safety authorities who are not necessarily qualified in their field, but are given authority and have the feeling that they are somehow 
in charge of everything. And they'll make pronouncements that, you know, that are, that are bad decisions. Of course, because they've got that government badge, they've got authority. And unfortunately, we're in a down situation now where we are getting worse. We're not near the bottom yet. Where the authorities are almost, are, they're going to destroy themselves. They always do. They always destroy themselves. The authorities don't last because they end up destroying themselves in the end. And this is what's happened. The self-destruction has already begun. And it's begun at a pace we've never seen before. But in the meantime, you've got to hang on and learn how to survive as things come about. And I think it's very difficult to sort of stay positive when things, when things seem so bleak. kind of the difficulties you know, when I'm talking to people today, young and old. There's a sense of depression about what's going on. And the thing is these sort of idiots in power as Dostoevsky describes them don't seem to understand the destruction they're doing, the destruction they're causing. And they never will, because they don't want to see it. These are things that they don't want to see. So they never will see it. And this is what makes them morons, this is what makes them idiots, because at some point in time when you don't want to see something, you don't, if you, if you ignore it for long enough, your capacity to see diminishes to the point where you can't see. In other words, no longer a point, no longer an issue of capacity, because the capacity has diminished to the point where you can't see, where you can no longer see. That's what's happened to a lot of people, you know, young people in history. There, there's been a disconnect, so they don't understand history. And because they don't understand history, they have no connection to history, no means of connecting to history. They accept whatever is told to them in the textbooks. And it's hard to explain to young people that there's a far more beyond what's in the textbook. The textbook is, in many cases, simply at the beginning of the introduction. And it's not until you leave the textbook, or outside the textbook, to see what's beyond, you begin to realize how minimal textbook knowledge is. It's not about studying and memorizing this for a test or that. It's about understanding why things occur. What was the psychology going on at the time? What, what were the feelings? What, 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 what were the situations going on? And once you understand that, then you can begin to understand the nature of how society works because it goes all, all, all the way back, all the way back to, in many cases, it's a stigma of Freud. And we're still, and so in some ways, as we talk about we're in the Freudian era, but at the same time, we're, we're still within the era of the Roman Catholic Church goes back to about a thousand AD, and it's hard to sort of fathom how these two things could actually be true. But the fact is, they are true. There's just different aspects of how you see things. 
and we're back.